Hi everyone, my name is Anton, work at Datadog, and I'm going to be talking about rate limiting with Cilium and eBPS. Um, so very quickly, I will start by doing a very high level overview of how Cilium does bandwidth management. And then I will talk about some uh, interesting lessons that we learned while trying to put it in place at Datadog. So why do we need bandwidth management? When we have multiple pods running on the same host, they share the same network bandwidth, which can cause uh, network contention. And this is where Cilium comes in with the bandwidth manager feature, which allows uh, us to perform egress bandwidth rate limiting in order to prevent this kind of contention. Let's see how this works. Uh, we start uh, with a pod that we label with this specific um, egress bandwidth label. In this example, we limit it to 10 megabit per second. And if we have the bandwidth manager feature enabled in Cilium, it will detect this label and it will automatically inject this um, BPF program into the pods network interface to actually perform the rate limiting. So this is where the crux of the bandwidth manager implementation lies in this uh, EDT scheduled departure function. And it does this um, earlier departure time scheduling algorithm in order to rate limit the network bandwidth. So how it works, um, it looks at every single um, uh, outgoing packet. It looks at the max bandwidth rate. Set, uh, so here in this example, it would be 10 megabit per second. And then it will calculate how much each uh, packet needs to be delayed in order to achieve the uh, desired bandwidth. So it will basically slow down um, each packet in order to achieve the well, the, the bandwidth that we expect, and it will do it by setting the um, timestamp on the packet, which indicates the earliest time the packet is allowed to depart. Uh, once the packet goes through this BPF program, it will go on the um, fair queue, queue disks set by um, Cilium on the machine, and it will actually be the FQQ disk which will read the timestamp set by the BPF program, and slow down the packets as needed. And after this, the packet will go on the network interface card queue. Uh, actually, in real life, uh, when you run a multi-core machine, this will look mm, more something like this with a multiple uh, FQQ disk managed by uh, one global FQQ disk, but the, the idea stays the same. And just to note that Cilium will override your um, queue disk setup on your machine as soon as you enable the bandwidth manager. So something to pay attention to. Now the lessons that we learned while trying to put this in place. So we did some uh, benchmarks. Uh, well, this graph looks a bit scary, but they're just, uh, you know, three things, download, upload, and latency. So this is a baseline benchmark we, without the bandwidth manager. So here we have um, basically four gigabit per second on average per flow. We have four gigabit per second on average uh, per flow on egress as well. And average one millisecond latency. And then we enabled the bandwidth manager and, and we observed some interesting things. Um, first of all, here we have the egress bandwidth, which is limited, which is normal because we enabled the bandwidth manager. So we are rate limiting the, um, the pod here. However, the download uh, bandwidth suffered a lot. So it went from four gigabit per second baseline to around 500 megabit per second. And then the latency shoot up to 80 milliseconds on average, so 80 times uh, more. So when we investigated this issue, we realized that um, we have not enabled this uh, BPF host routing feature that was added in Cilium uh, 1.9. And just generally, this is uh, much faster than uh, the um, kind of legacy routing that, that Cilium does because it uh, um, bypasses IP tables and bypasses the uh, upper network stack in the host namespace. And also it ensures that the TCP back pressure works properly. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have time to go into much detail on how this works, but anyway, we enabled this feature and then the results were much better. So here the uh, egress is still fine. Um, the ingress got to four gigabit per second, so basically the host uh, maximum. However, latency, well, it got better, so from 80 milliseconds to 15, but it's still, um, well, still higher than, than baseline. So we looked into it a bit more, 
And we realized that this might be due to the fact, to the, to the way the EDT scheduling algorithm works, actually. So what happens with this algorithm is that all packets from all flows coming from a pod get assigned a uh, timestamp sequentially and globally in this uh, BPF program that I showed uh, before. So actually, even though packets may end up in different uh, queues, um, because of this timestamp assignment uh, done globally, they end up forming this one um, sort of virtual uh, FIFO queue. So you get this uh, latency increase. So to sum up, the three lessons we learned is that first, um, your default queue disks will be changed to FPU by Cilium as soon as you enable the bandwidth manager, even if you don't use the, this feature. You also need to make sure that you have BPF host routing enabled if you wanna use uh, this feature efficiently. And finally, there will still be a latency increase due to the way the EDT algorithm works. And actually this talk is also a call for ideas if you have any ideas on how to improve this. Um, and if you will want to learn um, a bit more about this particular problem, I highly recommend reading the blog post in number four, uh, which explains this uh, problem in much more detail. And this is it for me. Thank you very much.